So this is uh, my evaluation question three, what we have learned from our audience feedback. Um, and I'll start with the focus group, which should be uploaded onto the blog, um, as well as this. Uh, we first showed the focus group our documentary, which was, which went down quite well, actually. Um, the initial reaction was that it's something they would consider watching. It was interesting and informative. Uh, and they would likely watch it. This was backed up by our um, our questionnaire, which we issued to all of our class when we watched it in class. And the lowest result that we got, it, the question was, out of 10, how would you write documentary? One being very poor, 10 being excellent. The lowest score was eight. The average was around nine with 12 people voting rating it 9 out of 10. Um, so I feel that we, and this was among our primary target audience, which was students, 18 to 25. Uh, most of them had part-time jobs as well. So I feel our documentary did appeal to the target audience how we intended through following, developing, challenging codes of convention, and also the topic itself. Um, some comments were that our, possibly our theme was a bit too mature for the target audience, the 18 to 25 target audience. We really intended, we really challenged convention just because we wanted to create a documentary based on our, based on newly economically active people, 18 to 25s, learning how to spend their money wisely rather than just wasting it on brands, which was the overall discussion in the documentary. Um, but overall, but then we asked, do you, we asked the focus group then if they feel um, what they felt the target audience would be in, with this documentary and the overall reaction was very positive that our documentary targeted the 18 to 25 demographic. This is also supported by our, our research as well as many people voted exactly the same. I believe only uh, it was 16 out of the 18 sample size which voted that it would be 18 to 25. The gender, as we intended, we wanted to target both genders, but we had a few comments saying that possibly it might be a bit more male orientated. This was just because of uh, the kind of overall possible, say the hosts, both of the hosts were male and there was quite a few male Vox Pops, so many people, especially uh, my female peers who watched the documentary, felt like it was a very male-dominated documentary, so it might be targeted towards more of a male audience. But overall, um, two-thirds of, of our peers watching in the class felt that it was targeted towards both um, towards both genders, but but some, as I say, some people thought it was more tar the subject was more targeted towards females, but the overall production of the documentary targeted towards males. But I feel our group, our focus group, really said that it was both. Now we went on to the hosts and the focus group felt this worked very well, that it was uh, quite fresh, the interchange was quite fresh. We got this from uh, the feedback that we got from the, our peers verbally during the class, but also during the, by handing out the survey as 100% of all respondents said that they liked the combination of the two hosts, 
that it worked quite well. This was a convention we kind of developed rather than having just the one host, which was typical of an investigative documentary like we were trying to produce. But I, f I feel this worked pretty well in our documentary. Um, then we went on to the Vox Pops. Now, in our, this proved an issue with our Vox Pops. Just because during our documentary, when we created the Vox Pops, we made some mistakes by turning the microphone frequency too high, meaning there was quite a la loud buzzing sound over all of our Vox Pops. We tried to fix this using the denoiser in um, Premiere Pro, that, which is the editing software which we used, but fortunately it was still kind of apparent in the documentary, which meant the audio was unclear. This was picked up and uh, decoded by the by both the group, the focus group, and also our peers were watching in the classroom as they felt that this was this was a problem and next time it, w it would need to be fixed. Unfortunately, we didn't have the time nor the resources to refilm the document at Vox Pops, especially uh, due to the experiment nature of our Vox Pops as we developed convention rather than just asking questions. We got a reaction from an experiment which was took a lot of resources to set up just one time, so we couldn't set it up again. Um, but overall, people thought the Vox Pops were good. The content of them was good. It was just the audio levels, which we struggled to maintain. And, and this was clearly visible in our documentary. And, and I feel next time, if we were to, say, recreate, redo this project or do another documentary, this would be something I'd put a lot more emphasis on. And make sure mistakes like this don't happen, that there's no buzzing in the first place, so the audio is much more clear at the time. Um, we... Uh, when we asked the focus group and also our peers how effective the documentary was at showing our uh, showing the issue of brand overpricing and bra brand overpowering they thought that we presented quite well we had a very structured argument we and we didn't we kept their attention with the with the arguments we were making rather than developing a point so far that the audience got bored the focus group made an, an a special point saying that we had quite a um, we kept the audience attention quite well that we developed a point and then moved on to the next one giving the adequate amount of information about the pre first point and then quickly moving on making documentary more easy and flowing this was also backed up by our verbal feedback from the classroom um, by our primary target audience as they too thought that the documentary was quite nicely flowing and also this was backed up during the uh, with the questionnaire as when we asked was the pace too slow was the flow too slow or fast a around 70 80 percent said that they thought it was just right, it, they could keep up with the documentary just well, it wasn't going too, flow or too slow or too fast for them. Um, whereas the other 10% said it may have gone a bit too fast, which, was, which wasn't brought up in the focus group. Um, this was brought up, however, during a media masterclass where we showed our documentary to a professor of, a professor, a doctor of media who as many documentary productions he said it might have flowed a bit too fast and the host talked a bit too fast um, but in conclusion to the documentary feedback that we got from our primary target audience was that 
the documentary was good, it was very effective, and 100% of the focus group said they would watch it in real life, like if, they, it, if it was to be produced professionally, they would watch it in real life. But at the same time, um, but the same kind of issues were brought up with both, with both the questionnaire, the audible feedback that we got from the class, and also the focus group that the vox pops and the audio levels on some occasions were um, were a bit off and sometimes in, inaudible. In our questionnaire, we asked, was there any parts which were inaudible? There was many which said at the end, this was due to a mistake in in editing where we didn't mute one of the one of the timelines as seen in Premiere Pro. Um, because of this, we went back, because of this feedback, we went back and edited it again and then re-uploaded it to make, to rectify the error. So I believe we've reacted to that audience feedback, the, our primary audience feedback, by rectifying this, making our documentary more professional. Unfortunately, we can't react to and change the Vox Pops to an extent as the as the issue with them wasn't with the editing, it was with the production of them. I feel next time if we were to create another documentary, uh, we would pay much more attention on this. Now afterwards, we showed them this, which is our double page spread uh, we created for the documentary, which would promote the documentary. Um, the original points were, very good. They thought it was very eye-catching, especially the masthead. The um, we somewhat developed convention rather than just having a block masthead. We we had uh, internal images in the masthead, which gra instantly grabbed the focus group's attention. Especially um, one piece of feedback we did receive was that the masthead should have been used in the documentary. There should have been that kind of correlation between the documentary and our magazine cover, our magazine double page spread. Just because they thought that this masthead, the branded masthead just here, thought it was uh, much better than the branded title that we, we used on Premiere Pro. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to change it before we had to uh, import, uh, export it and overall finish the product. But I believe with this sort of feedback, next time we would possibly take this into account and use both the masthead on both products to kind of create that strong brand identity for, for ourselves, like linking the two. Uh, they thought the the backdrop to the magazine was especially clever as it it was very busy and I'm not sure if you can see on here there is a there's a very faint background with lots of phrases and slogans and whatnot. This was created in in Photoshop. This the reaction to this was that this compensated for putting in more images. Some feedback that we received was that we needed more images and we only put three, three in, one main image and two images which were, which were quite small and those were from the experts. Um, overall, uh, but they said that because it was quite a busy background, it, busy background, but also subtle background. It did, it was noticeable by the audience, this was proved through the focus group as they did notice it straight away. But at the same time, it didn't distract from the text itself. Um, one member of the focus group said that the text was possibly too small and they would only read the, the bigger text and the grab quotes uh, rather than reading the whole article. Uh, but the other group members thought that it was important that we had this amount of texting to give the people who wanted to learn more about documentary more information on the documentary itself. 
they thought the images were especially effective as they were taken from the documentary itself. So there was that correlation there. Um, and really, oh, another good point was that we put the the information such as the BBC One, 14th of December at seven o'clock on the masthead. This, because the masthead draws the most attention, I feel this was very effective and so did the group, uh, our peers and also the group focus group as they believed that by having that sort of attention grab to it, it would, people would be more likely to tune in and watch it and remember the date and time which, which it would be on. Um, some negative points that we received was the top of the of the double page spread where it says documentaries on TV this week. We did this just to re try and follow convention of normal magazines where it has a kind of heading on it, whether it be films this week, documentaries this week. We tried to kind of follow that convention, but I don't think the colour scheme quite worked. They thought the colour scheme between the colour scheme was very gender mutual, which kind of fitted in with our target audience. There was an even number of males and females, which in our double page spread in the images, so I believe that kind of said said to the audience that uh, that the documentary was targeted at both genders. At both genders, the both of the hosts were of the fit the target audience description so this also said to the focus group and our peers that this was um, uh, this was targeted towards the age group one piece of negative feedback we did receive was that from the focus group that the grab quotes down here there is also one up there could have been bigger just to grab more attention of the of the audience and kind of like give it more impact but other than that they thought that the both the products documentary and magazine were very successful um unfortunately uh our camera switched off during um during the feedback that we gained from the radio trailer but overall it was quite good we took a risk in the radio trailer by developing convention and starting the radio trailer uh, and not just having exposition in the radio trailer and information. Started it by having overlapping voices saying brands, so like Levi's, for example, overlapping, so it created a kind of surrounding feel to the audience. And then it, um, and then it just cuts out, and then the information begins. They thought this was quite effective as they believed it was quite frequent, it was quite current, and, uh, and a modern technique to use, and would grab the attention of our document our target audience. Um, they did feel it could have been performed more uh, more professionally just because some of the some of the sound bites were poor quality and overall they thought that it possibly could have been improved. As I say if we were to replicate this, I think there would be a lot more time and effort put into matching up all of the images, but we did struggle, because none of us had used GarageBand relatively before, other than one time, we did struggle to match up all of the clips together. Um, therefore, the, the convention of putting the information last and the title last was, was good. It, it gave the audience the right impression and and gave them something to leave with. And overall, they thought it was a good, a good radio trailer, especially that the hosts were narrating the radio trailer. It, it linked greatly back to the documentary, they felt. And, and that's it, really. I think the main points were uh, to take away that all of the products did appeal to our primary target audience. Um, this was shown through the survey, the peer assessment uh, that we had in class, like the discussion that we had and also the focus group which will be up which is uploaded onto the blog um, I believe the negatives that we need to take back from this <coughs> back from this project was the vox pops and the audio levels for the documentary 
possibly the ordering in the radio trailer and kind of the dramatic like the kind of pauses which weren't very um which they felt were occasionally too long and also just the just some minor features in the radio radio trailer but because of our audience feedback i believe the completion of these three products linked well with each other and also it was very successful